Hi, everyone. Um, so let me talk a bit about open source and how you can use that in the enterprise. Um, obviously, when you talk about open source, uh, the thing that comes to mind first and foremost is that the source is open and you can edit and modify it kind of scenario. Um, however, uh, I would like to look at open source uh, in a much more broader perspective. And for me, the most important aspect of open source is the community aspect, as well as the communication aspect, as well as the packaged uh, advantages that open source brings along with it, and also uh, the, the things that we can learn as a business or an organization or an enterprise from open source principles when it comes to uh, getting things done, and especially when it comes to getting things done in, an, uh, in, in a software world manner. And uh, that could be uh, products such as open source uh, that WSU does, or the solutions that you build in, in the enterprise. Uh, you can use the principles to run the projects in a more agile manner kind of scenario. <laughs> so, um, uh, like I said, I, I believe uh, open source uh, brings uh, this aspect of open communication, which is the most important aspect of open source. So if you go to any open source project, uh, there are usually the developer community and the user community. So it encourages people to participate in an open manner to discuss things uh, from how to use it, as well as how things should be designed, how things should be modified, how things should be communicated, etc. Now, in an open source setup, as well as in an enterprise setup, the model of open communication is very important because uh, it gives people freedom to express themselves and bring ideas in so that rather than it is, uh, it's not designed by committee, but rather uh, how can we discuss our ideas in open and bring about the best that you can when it comes to getting uh, things done is the model of the story. So um, in, in one angle, open source projects encourages you to go and participate because they are adopting open uh, communication culture. On the other angle, if you are an op uh, enterprise which is not open source but still developing software, you can adopt the open communication culture in order to bring about ideas for your projects and make sure that people participate uh, so that you can keep the communication channels open to be open about what you are doing and there's no information uh, dissemination problems associated with the project that's going on and it brings about project visibility as well. The other aspect is the dynamic decision making. In most of the uh, open source software organizations, decisions are made by people who are distributed all over the world in a collective manner. And based on the situations, they do make decisions. And sometimes some decisions in open source projects are very strategic. They adopt state of the art technologies. They define their architectures, right? They look at the market and pick and choose what standards to, uh, to adapt to and uh, things like that. They also look into legal aspects. It is the open source community itself that defines the licensing terms and things like that. So if you look at the amount of decisions that go in uh, around an open source uh, project, uh, the decision making structure is quite dynamic. And that is can be associated to the culture or the way that uh, these op open source projects or organizations work. So we can learn a lot from those organizations in terms of how we can make our decision making dynamic and adapt those into our organizational culture uh, to make decision making much more dynamic rather than top down hierarchy kind of scenario. The other most important aspect is the aspect of uh, meritocracy. Uh, when you are in a project, when you are in a set of uh, people, when you are in a set of um, a setup where a team is working, it matters that everybody owns what they do, and it matters that everybody contributes to the uh, best of their abilities, and it also matters that people with potential who are willing to take things and run, people who are willing to contribute more, people who are willing to uh, participate more, people who are passionate about it, given the chance to uh, do more with it kind of scenario. So if you look at, for example, the Apache community, how Apache community drives projects, it's based on this principle. People who does more gets more responsibilities because they are the ones who are passionate about the situation. So that is one of the things that we can adopt in 
our software projects as well, because that allows us to uh, give the credit to people who does more and give them uh, um, both uh, empowerment and that will result in accountability when it comes to uh, getting things done. And it is a nice model that we practice within WC2 as well and it works very well for us as an organizational practice. The other thing is release early and release often. <clears throat> Uh, in open source world, latest is the greatest. And if latest is the greatest, uh, if you are delaying your releases a lot, it's not going to help. And obviously the whole world knows about agility and this is how open source world um, practices agile principle. They release early as soon as possible they can. They also release very often. Now, if you look at the mechanics or how this works, what happens here is that again, the beauty of open source projects, most of the open source projects is that there are multiple people involved across various geographies and they work in a collective manner and different people's work put together can be done as a release uh, often. Uh, the hidden secret in here is that most of the time it's the design of the project that allows you to do this. Otherwise, the release early, release often uh, distributed model of development is not going to work. So the, 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 the nature of how distributed people work and the attitude towards let's get this release out sooner than later helps them a lot. And if you look at most of the uh, open source projects, they have their own set of tools to help do this stuff. They have their own testing, unit, uh, very good uh, unit testing frameworks, and almost um, the, the build uh, uh, works on a daily basis, and if it breaks, people jump in, uh, jump in and fix those. So there's self-responsibility that enables this particular aspect. So it's not just people write something, package and deliver. There are related mechanisms and DNA that helps you do this. So I think it is very important to look into those aspects and learn from those if we are also um, adopting the release early, release often aspect when it comes to enterprise software projects as well. <clears throat> the other biggest thing about uh, open source is users are part of the project. They can participate. One of the biggest contributions from users in the open source arena is that they report bugs. That's the first thing. But then again, there are other things, right? If somebody asks a question, if somebody else answers, that naturally becomes the knowledge base. So the biggest knowledge base uh, of an open source project is the user list, most of the time. Yes, there's documentation as well, but the knowledge base is the user list. But what this means is that users are part of the project. They can participate. They can uh, um, contribute to the project. Now, this is also very important for the, the, the enterprise projects as well. If we treat our users of the software that we develop, you versus us kind of philosophy, that's not going to work. The most natural way of integrating the user into the system is to let them participate and uh, we treat them in an empathetic manner. Uh, we treat them with empathy so that we, they get encouraged to participate. So uh, uh, if we treat them as part of the project, it becomes very easy to get the job done. And this is again one of those principles of Agile, and this is how open source adopts it. This is uh, the way that uh, uh, open source gets the, the customer to participate in the software project that they do. <clears throat> So as you can see, it's not just the fact that it is available under a, a permissive license or uh, uh, that the source code is available, what open source is all about. It's about, in one way it is about the culture and the culture is facilitated by the aspect of community. Both the developer as well as the user community matters a lot when it comes to open source. So there are much more value beyond source code when it comes to open source principles. And the engineering process is also very interesting, right? There's a lot of uh, collaboration. Like I said repeatedly, uh, most of the open source projects are done with distributed teams. That's one of the beauties of open source projects. And most of the open source projects are technologically superior. 
there, there are some of the, if you look at any technology space, there's always an open source alternative in that space, right? That shows that they are technically ahead in any game. And uh, um, there's a lot of sharing, there's a lot of uh, uh, reuse, there are a lot of feedback cycles. Um, release early, release open also means there's a lot of evolution and obviously the quality matters because of the user base, the kind of different people that um, users who reports bugs, etc., makes the quality much easier process when it comes to open source. And if you want to use open source in an enterprise, <coughs> there are uh, various values that brings into the business aspect of it. One is adoption. Adoption makes it uh, clearer that you, you can trust that this particular project to work. The other is transparency. When people use some piece of software, they want to make sure that they can trust what is going on. Can you predict what is going to happen? Is the roadmap clear? And most of the open source projects, given the fact that it is open communication, transparency is baked in. If you don't get enough visibility, you can always ask. And that brings about transparency. The other aspect is legal and procurement aspects. Uh, the legal department and the procurement department will be more interested in rather than the price, what are the legal implications if you try to use this? And in the open source world, if you look at licenses, the legal department will be very comfortable with the set of licenses that they are familiar with. So it allows you to uh, make their lives easier when it comes to evaluation of a particular piece of software. And the other aspect is that if you have time, you can invest and participate in the project. And if you don't have time, and if you have budget, you might also be able to buy support for the open source project, which becomes useful. So it's not just whether you can use it for free, it's also about can I get with the other business benefits, if I don't have time, can I spend budget and get support for it? And most of the software projects do have that alternative as well. And when it comes to IT solutions, uh, needless to say, these are the three main factors that you have to consider when it comes to cost. You have to consider the hardware cost, you have to consider the uh, software cost, and what about the services or the, the effort that you have to put in order to build your solution, which uh, uh, comes as service cost. Uh, not only to build as well as maintain and run uh, comes into the picture. So if you want to play around with these cost factors, hardware is obviously is a fixed cost. Obviously, hardware is becoming cheaper and cheaper. So if you want to play around with the price, there's little that you can do with hardware these days, unless otherwise you want to move to the cloud, and even that, uh, that gets capped at a certain place. So if you want to play with price, there are two places that you can pick and choose to play with price. One is software. How much you are going to spend on the base software that you want to um, purchase and uh, use, and then, the solution that you're going to implement using the software, right? How much of services uh, you want to buy. So if you look at open source, and if open source is going to give you benefit, sometimes you can use the open source in the, through open source manner, and your costs can reduce. And sometimes you, if you have budget, you can buy it, uh, support for it, and the total cost of ownership can reduce. So what this means is, is that most of the time you have more budget uh, in order to spend on services and you can go for a higher quality services or, or, or better uh, service options or look at different engagement models kind of scenario. So uh, the, the, the dynamics of the total cost of the project uh, becomes much flexible when it comes to choices if you have uh, open source involved in some of the projects that you are using, uh, going to use in the uh, enterprise. <clears throat> the other aspects of uh, uh, the software that you want to use is that what kind of uh, value you want to gain out of software? Do you want the license and be done with it? Or do you want to build a relationship or partnership with the software vendor? So if you think literally open source, again, you can think about the user community as the partnership model that you can come. There are other users who can help you. There are developers who can help you. There are companies that might provide support for 
that particular open source software project that you want to use. So there are various partnership options that are on the table that you can build value on top of. The other thing is that how you are going to de-risk your project um, or the solution or the deployment, right? What are the options that are available? And if you take some uh, open source software, if it is widely used, it de-risks all the sudden based on the user base because there might be multiple users on multiple platforms that who are using this particular uh, open source software project so that you don't have to worry about it being tested uh, on the kind of platform that you're trying to use. <clears throat> uh, the other aspect of open source is that provided that there's a wider community um, of adoption, your recruiting becomes much easier. If you are looking for a particular set of skills, uh, it could be really useful if you can hire people with that skill set. And if the community is wider, your choices are much larger. Right? And the other aspect is, is that if you take something like WSO2, WSO2 obviously develops open source software. But then we also, one of the things is that we develop our own value addition and our own code. But at the same time, we also package a lot of other open source as well. So if you are using WSO2, for example, I'm taking WSO2 because I'm from WSO2. Uh, it's not just the WSO2 product that matters. It's also that what are the other open source components that we package into our product matters. So if you are looking for expertise, uh, it's not just about WSO2. It's also about the rest of the, uh, the ecosystem that matters when it comes to skill set. So uh, what I tried to tell you here is that mainly the value of community, the value of open communication model that surrounds open source that can have a lot of value when it comes to using open source and using open source not from a software perspective but also from a philosophy, the business process, the organization model, the process model kind of perspective provides a lot of value if you think about it. Uh, and the aspect of how we, uh, um, how we build community, how we collaborate, how we communicate uh, matters a lot when it comes to enterprise also. Because uh, the, the aspect of, okay, distributed people are working together in order to get a release done in an early and an open manner means that even your business units in your organization can adopt the same model if you consider different business units to be distributed people across. So if you adopt and if it works for you, that's a nice model that you can use in the enterprise. And the decision-making models uh, uh, and, and the aspect that you can focus more on the solution, if you can cut costs or, or manage costs uh, that you spend on software and the kind of collaboration that you can bring about based on the open source principles, makes a lot of value when it comes to uh, enterprise projects. All right, thank you very much. If you have any questions. <coughs> no? All right, thank you.